Evie, it's week like ten or eleven of lockdown. How are you doing? I'm getting through it. Yeah. Day by day, I'm trying not to think about like how long we've been in it, but it's fucked. It's really fucked. This point, I feel like at this point, I haven't even talked to any friends that I have here. Yeah. But actually, like if I were to go back to normalcy, it would not be great because I would, <laughs> it would take a long time for me to get back into it. Oh, dude. Well, you're in Newtown. I'm in Newtown. Let's go for a walk then. I we know. Can, we we have can do this. Can we go on a social distance walk? What can we do? Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We'll wear masks. Okay, so right before this, you were touring with Amy Shark. That would have been such an intense high to such like a low really quickly. Yeah, it is a lot. Like I definitely ha- had to catch myself from falling into like depression, and like I definitely had a lot of anxiety, and still I'm having terrible anxiety throughout this whole COVID lockdown. But like you know, I feel like it's not nearly as bad as last year. So I'm just grateful that I'm like healthy and living in the city and with my family that's really like all I'm thinking about that's really important you've shared stages with some pretty like phenomenal names Bastille Sigrid is each large tour like that um pretty unique to each other or very similar what's it like behind the scenes I mean it's very much the same thing. It's like you're just put in a dressing room and then you're told when to come out. But I feel like Amy's tour was nice because I was on the whole tour. Obviously, we didn't get to finish it. But the Bastille, I was just popped in for like two shows. So I wasn't like tight with everybody. But with the Amy shows, it's like we all know each other, like even the crew and everyone on Amy's team and teenage Joan Jonas who are on with us as well like it's just nice it just feels like a nice community and like you walk outside and everyone knows each other and it's so cute it's so humble and I I I love it I really do that's so cute it's like a touring family yeah pretty much the last day like when we were playing Brisbane we all yeah. knew that it was going to be the last show because of the cases and we were still having issues ourselves. Like Sydney just went into lockdown, but we were, I'm from Sydney and I think most of my band were from Sydney too. So we were trying to figure out like um, lockdown situations. We had like a pass to be in Brisbane and the Gold Coast as like a bubble. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like we had to have quarantine, like we weren't allowed to walk around or do anything. It was very weird. But anyways, the last show that we did was in Brisbane. And I think there was just something so special about it because we all knew that it was going to be like the last one for a while. And we all got emotional. Like backstage, we were, I think after the show, we all like shed a tear because it was just like, it's such a special moment. Like we really did accomplish so much and such a short amount of time my band came together like three days before the show yeah wow it was all very like intense high energy a lot of emotions (laughs) because when you know something's ending it like it's sad it's it's almost better when you don't know because then you don't attach those emotions to it Mm. but Uh, haven't they haven't they announced new rescheduled dates you're picking this back up again Nothing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we are next year. But it's not like yeah. it's like in a month. It's like next yeah. year. But it's still good. Hey, that's something to look forward to. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get some more background on you then before we talk about your music. Um, I'm super curious about when you were 15, you convinced your family to move to Nashville. And I know Emma Stone famously used a PowerPoint to convince her family to move to Los Angeles when she was a similar age. How did you do it coming from the central coast to a big move over to the other side of the world? I think I just have like a way with my words with my parents. <laughs> no, I, I actually don't. My, I, I think my parents knew that like, they were sort of on board with me. I had to convince them a little bit 
but they knew that I wanted to do it and they were they were more they were more willing to let me go for the sake of experience and for the sake of just like new environment and learning things necessarily over like my career in music like it was just meant to be um a period of like life learnings rather than like getting into the music industry so I think that's why it was easy to convince them because they were like even though my points were probably like I love music I want to do it they probably were like oh no this is good for her like get out of the central coast and the bubble there and like see the real world and have a taste of it yeah that's crazy early to be doing those sort of big moves is that why you chose Nashville then for the scene there before going to Los Angeles or no I actually started in Los Angeles oh like, did you oh there you go yeah I was there for a month and okay. I it's a big city I oh, was yeah straight up I did not know where to start I looked up because all I knew how to do was play open mic nights from the central coast so I looked up like top 100 open mic nights in Los Angeles and I just started playing them. Every single night I would go and I would play. And then one night I went to the most, I would play the most random places, by the way, like just grocery shops and clothing stores. And like, like when I went to Nashville, it was like very much like country, like weird things but I loved it um this one night I was at like a cabaret type place playing I do not know why I'm not cabaret at all I was with my guitar not a piano so that was a bit embarrassing but this woman comes up to me and she's like you need to go to Nashville and literally then like the next day we were on a plane to Nashville wow just from that one woman that's enough to convince you to go to Nashville you know, it doesn't take my parents much convincing, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, that was literally it. I love that. So did all your siblings come along as well? No. my I have two sisters. One at the time was like 27. The other was 18. Okay. So my 18-year-old sister was at college. So she was living on campus in Sydney. Hmm. And my elder sister, you know, she's living her life. Her yeah, best yeah. Life. she's doing her own thing now. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Tell me about your dad because in all of the all of like behind the scenes videos and everything, he's always there. And you've also done some really good TikToks pranking him while he watches your interviews. Yes. Well, my, what do you want to know? How, like, how's his hand in your career? Because he's got to be a creative himself, right? Yes. He <laughs> definitely like, he has definitely been like the best person in my career so far that I've met. Maybe that's biased because he's my dad. <laughs> but I think that there's like a couple things in it. Yeah. Like no one has your best interest but your father and your mother. You know, like I really do think that it is a volatile industry and it is very hard to find people you trust and you can find someone you trust so much, but in the end, like they've got to put food on their plate. You know what I mean? And they're going to put themselves before you. And my dad has never put himself before me. He's been so selfless. Um, obviously, by packing up and moving to LA and wherever I was in the world, he did it. Um, and he's been, no, honestly, he has been a really big part of my success and my career, especially when we moved um when we moved back to LA and all of the record deals and craziness was happening, like he was really the one in the meetings with me. Like he was very much like the dadager to me, you know, like he really was the dadager and everyone, like everyone still refers to him as like the dadager, but he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> like that. He doesn't like, it. I think he thinks it's a negative connotation or something, but it's not, but no, yeah. not at all. He's really been there. And my honestly, like, I did not know how my mother let any of that happen, but she's, my mom's the chillest woman in the world. Like she's just so great. And she's just like, Evie, I want you to succeed. I want you to be the best person of, that you can possibly be. And just, I just want to see you just grow and, 
And she just let me do whatever. And she's just like, I'm not going to get into the business side of it or the industry because your dad's already doing that. So like, mm. why do you need two parents in it really? Mm. On top of like management and this and that. And it's a lot of people. But um, yeah, I'm just lucky. I am really lucky to have them. That's crazy. That's such a good support network to fall back on when you need it. All right, well, let's talk about your music then, the stuff that you really do though. And your latest single, Bleed. <laughs> This one is like super bombastic. It's so like a punk pop energy. Tell me about the idea of the song and where it started. We, okay. So I personally, like I said before, like I don't have many friends. At least I don't. <laughs> yeah, Evie. I don't keep in touch with many people. And I wrote this song on a riding camp. Oh yeah, okay. At Strong Hubs, you know? I was so not willing to go to this. I was like, fuck my life. This is before the Amy tour. So I like Amy was going like a whole ton of people and I didn't know anybody. Like I did not know a single person. And I, you know how small this industry is. Like every, everyone knows everyone. So I walk in there and everyone's like, hey, hi. I'm ready. I don't want to be there because of my social anxiety. And I'm like, fuck, I, I just don't, like, I'm here for the food. I'm just here for the, I'm here for the food. Oh, that hits my heart. I feel that. Yeah. It's a big mood. I literally was there for the food. And I was like, obviously, I'm going to meet people and, like, whatever. It'll be sweet. I know I'm going to, I just give a couple compliments and I should be fine, you know? Yeah. So I'm, like, a day in. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm, like, so, I don't know if I can do this for three days. Then I go back again and like my parents like, Evie, you have to go. Just go. It's one last day. And I'm like, fine, I'll go. And I end up going and I get put in a room with Louis Schwal and Xavier Dunn. And I had actually, these are the two people that I had met briefly before the camp. So I actually knew them a little bit. And we went in and like, it was only because the last day, like you have to finish up all the songs that you've done and write a new one. So like not a full day of writing. There's like this pressure that I was feeling like, fuck, we have to write a song in like four hours really. And we were song in like an hour. So it was like cut and finished. And, like Zave worked on it for like, an, like a day afterwards on production, but like I was just like all the vocals and everything and literally just like one take of me just like like, when we got the lyric just being like call me scissors cut you Uh off like yeah Yeah, I love that did you get the chance to play this one on the shark tour then yes I made sure because I was like I know that this is gonna be one that I release so Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm going to I'm gonna play it I don't care I'm playing it like literally and I was like, I want to do it because I want to do a call and response because it always like, it's just the best thing, especially when people don't know you. It's like, you can be like, nah, 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 nah. And they'll just like say, it's so easy. It's so easy. Yeah. And everyone, like literally, I would not get a message. Um, After every single show I was playing on the Amy tour, everyone was like, what was the song? What was the song? What was the song? Please. I can't find it anywhere. Where is that? I'm like, just wait, it's coming soon, I promise you. <laughs> yes, make them hungry. I love it. Okay, so your last two EPs were The Pessimist and The Optimist. I'm curious, uh, what are you working towards at the moment then? I am working towards... Okay, it's funny because after meeting Zave, I was like, I really love Zave. And Louis, of course, as well. But Louis was, like, travelling, like, not in Australia. and He's very busy. He's a busy man. I was like... I want to work with Zave more and more. So I start working with Zave and like just me and him and just like vibing. And then I decide I really know like what's been missing from my project has been very much like sonically a sound that's cohesive. And I feel like I all the music I've made is still like very uncohesive until now, like until what I'm about release actually I don't know what I'm about to release I might release like a couple more that are random and then like go into what I'm about to go into 
but like everything before I feel like it was just me trying to figure it out like honestly just like find my voice and find my place and I don't think I did it yet okay but honestly like now working with Zay I found like the stomachal sound and like I really feel like we're like just speaking such true to me and like just words and things that only I could say and I'm so fucking pumped for it because it is it's like a punk pop type like rock reverent music and it's very and fun too and it's like not too serious it's just like very much like like so me it's just me and music and that's like what it has to be you know what I mean that's what like every artist search for and maybe in two weeks I'll be like actually take that out because I don't think so anymore but for right now I'm like no this is like the sound so I've decided that I'm going to work on an album with him just me and Zay yeah the moment don't don't quote me because it very much could change we could have like a hundred people on yeah sorry (laughs) Zay you've been dropping this interview (laughs) but then we're gonna go to the Grove and finish it so we have like two weeks down at the Grove and just gonna like really get into it so I'm so excited I cannot wait I'm so excited oh all right we'll have to keep an eye out Evie it's been so great to chat to you and best of luck with the random spattering of releases we're about to hear (laughs) congrats on I appreciate it